Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining us today um, for our COVID-19 weekly update. My name is Stephanie Badillo Sanchez, and I am the communications specialist at the Yakima Health District. Starting this week, we will be having these updates in English one week and in Spanish the next. So the next English update will be on March 2nd. Hola a todos. Gracias por acompañarnos hoy en nuestra actualización semanal de COVID-19. A partir de esta semana, tendremos estas actualizaciones en inglés una semana y en español la próxima. El próximo martes tendremos una actualización en español en vivo en Facebook a las 6 p.m. Por favor, únase a nosotros la próxima semana. Y si tiene alguna pregunta, podemos responderla. Gracias. So we're all excited to be in phase two of Healthy Washington Roadmap to Recovery. So we'll be hearing from Sean McGee, Environmental Health Director at the Yakima Health District, to discuss phase two guidelines. This week, um, we received more COVID-19 vaccines, but a majority were second doses. We will be hearing from Nathan Johnson, Local Emergency Response Coordinator for more information on what that means for Yakima. If you have any questions about Yakima County being in phase two, phase two guidelines, or questions about the COVID-19 vaccine, please make sure to put them in the comment section as I will be monitoring it on Facebook. If you have other questions outside of these two topics, you're more than welcome to leave them in the comments and those will be addressed at a later time Either, either via, either via dif a different COVID-19 weekly update or being replied to directly on Facebook. Okay, so first we will be hearing from Sean. Sean, our South Central region, which includes Yakima County is now in phase two. What does that mean for our community? Yes, thank you. Um, so, uh... Us, like uh, everyone else, we're very excited to be able to transition into phase two. That was effective immediately on Sunday, uh, February 14th, um, that we got to open up under the phase two uh, guidelines. Um, so there's a lot of changes that come with phase two, and uh, I'll, I'll highlight some of the specific changes um, that some of our businesses and different activities uh, that can now take place um, in phase two. So the following are um, uh, changes from phase one. Uh, so our social and at-home gathering sizes for indoor gatherings are now, uh, in phase one, they were prohibited. Now it's a max of five people from outside your household, a limit of no more than two households. We also have social at-home gathering sizes for outdoor gatherings. Uh, the maximum went from 10 people to 15 people outside your household, limit of two households. Um, <clears throat> a lot of uh, uh, items remain unchanged, such as worship, worship services, retail stores, uh, professional services, um, personal services. Uh, they're all um, operating still at 25% capacity. Uh, a big change for our community, which is... Um, you know, uh, anticipated highly is now uh, for our food establishments, i.e. restaurants, bars, taverns, uh, wineries and such. Um, they are now allowed to operate for uh, indoor dining uh, at 25% capacity. Uh, some further restrictions with that is um, they must end alcohol services uh, at 11 p.m. Uh, and they are still allowed to use outdoor and open air dining uh, criteria uh, to allow more people uh, at their facilities, but only 25% occupancy inside. Also, it's a maximum of six persons per table, limit of two households per table. Uh, another big change um, is weddings, funerals. Uh, so ceremonies and indoor receptions, wakes or similar gatherings. Um, in conjunction with such ceremonies are now permitted and must follow the appropriate venue requirements. Uh, that means if it falls under a church, it must um, follow the guidelines for worship services. If it's at a, a different venue, like a Grange Hall um, or event center, um, 
you know, that they must follow the uh, miscellaneous uh, venues guidelines. But in a nutshell, it pretty much means it's 25% capacity or 200 people, whichever is less. Um, indoor recreation and fitness establishments, um, low moderate risk sports competitions are permitted, still no tournaments. High risk sports per are permitted to practice and train indoors. Fitness and training in indoor sports, maximum 25% capacity. Um, outdoor sports and fitness establishments, low, moderate, and high risk sport competitions are allowed. No tournaments. A maximum of 200 people, including spectators. Uh, also, indoor entertainment establishments. This includes aquariums, indoor theaters, indoor arenas, concert halls, indoor gardens, museums, uh, bowling, indoor trampoline uh, facilities, card rooms, um, and uh, I believe, if I'm not mistaken, um, libraries fall into this category too, but maximum occupancy is 25% or 200 people, whichever is less. If food and drinks are served, they must follow the uh, indoor dining requirements, the same as a restaurant. Um, outdoor entertainment, um, including zoos, outdoor gardens, outdoor aquariums, uh, drive-in theaters, stadiums, outdoor event spaces, arenas, uh, concert venues and rodeos. Groups of 15 uh, are the max, limit two households per group with a maximum of 200 people, including spectators for the event. So that is highlighting some of the major changes uh, that we see moving into phase two. And this is kind of the general overview. Um, there are specific guidance documents that break down all these different activities and operations even further. Um, if you are curious to what those guidelines say, those are available uh, on our website at yakimahealthdistrict.org. They are also available on the uh, Yakima Valley Tourism website yvopenandsafe.com. So all the most recent guidance uh, and information regarding phase two is on both of those websites. So uh, if you're a business uh, or you're a consumer or community member um, that uh, would like some more information on the specific guidances for different businesses and activities, um, youth and, and uh, school age sports, uh, collegiate and professional sporting events. It's all on there. It's all in those guidance documents. Um, and, you know, I, I, I like to tell people, you just got to scroll down that document a little bit further to get to phase, past the phase one guidance into the phase two guidance. So um, it's all out there. It's all available. If you have questions, please reach out. Um, you can call our general line, the 575-4040 and our phone staff would be happy to, to answer your questions. If your questions are a little more, answers to your questions are a little more complex, uh, they'll forward you on to um, some staff that work a little more in detail with these guidances about uh, different activities that are allowed or not allowed. Um, so that's really the highlights of, of phase two. Uh, what I really wanna emphasize uh, to folks out there is that unlike last time in the safe start plan, uh, in this roadmap to recovery plan, we do have, um, I don't wanna say opportunity, the, the chance to move back into phase one if, if transmission rates, hospitalization rates, uh, and uh, ICU capacity trend not in our favor, right? meaning cases start going back up, we see more hospitalizations. Basically, we need to continue to meet three of the four metrics to stay in phase two. So what I encourage everybody to do is learn these guidances for phase two. If you're a business owner, uh, manager, or employee, know these guidances, operate your businesses and activities and events under the scope of these guidances. Um, community members out there uh, living your everyday life, continue to implement best practices and decision-making around masking and social distancing and keeping our circle small when we gather with people um, to celebrate whatever it might be. Um, making those decisions and implementing those best practices in your everyday lives uh, and business operations is gonna be a key factor in keeping our numbers trending downward uh, and keeping us into phase two and giving us the best opportunity that once available 
we may be able to move into phase three right away. Um, we're in a position, our numbers are looking good. We continue to keep things trending the way they are. When the, a phase three uh, becomes a possibility, uh, there's no reason we can't be the first region to reach that, uh, that level. So that is my hope for Yakima County and the South Central region. Um, but it's not time to uh, relax and say, hey, we did it. Uh, this is a big milestone. This is a, this is a, a victory, um, but it's one that we must take care of and uh, make a um, concerted effort to maintain so we don't get pushed back into phase one. Uh, we want to see our businesses succeed. We want to see our community members have more uh, options um, and, um, you know, secure that uh, more a sense of normalcy um, while we're in phase two. Um, because this is, this is going to help our economy start to move. This is going to bring more activities and options for people to do, uh, to, to enjoy um, uh, their everyday life a little better, to recreate. We have kids going back to school. We have some sporting events happening. It's an exciting time, but we have to do so uh, the right way and we have to be smart about it. So that's, that is what I urge um, everybody out there in Yakima County to um, uh, keep in mind uh, going through their daily lives. Okay, thank you, Sean. And again, we do wanna reiterate the importance of following the public health recommendations. Um, it looks like we do have a question um, from Layla. The question is, is this the same as the phase two from last year? It's very similar. Um, I think some of the major changes that we're seeing um, in this phase two is there is a little bit more opportunity uh, for some indoor activities. Um, there's, you know, a more blanket um, guideline for indoor occupancy at 25% across the board. There were several um, items like indoor entertainment, so concert halls and things like that, that they weren't uh, going to be allowed to operate uh, until phase three or phase four of the old reopening plan. Now we have, uh, you know, certain events and venue types that can operate indoors 25% or 200 people, whichever is less, but it does give a little more freedom uh, to, to have those types of events on a smaller scale, uh, uh, on a scale that people can still socially distance and enjoy uh, some aspects of the live entertainment industry. Um, uh, so yeah, it is a little different, but it is very similar. Okay, thank you, Sean. And uh, let's jump over to Nathan. Um, we'll be hearing from Nathan. Nathan, what are the new updates about the COVID-19 vaccines? Yeah, thank you. Um, so this week, uh, we did receive additional vaccine into the county. Uh, unfortunately, it wasn't, uh, as much as we uh, would like and hope for, uh, we got 500 doses of first dose of vaccine uh, in uh, 3,200 doses of the booster dose. Um, and that's, that's for the entire county. So uh, as you can see, 500 doses is uh, not even a drop in the bucket, um, but we'll work on uh, getting those vaccines out to, to anyone who's eligible as soon as we can. Um, first of all, right now, uh, we are still vaccinating uh, our 1As, so our long-term care facilities, our first responders and our uh, healthcare workers. And then we're also vaccinating our 1B tier one, which is anyone who is 65 and older and anyone who's 50 and older in a multi-generational household. Uh, anyone who is not sure what phase that they, can, they fall under can go to findyourphasewa.org, uh, answer some questionnaires, they'll point you uh, to what phase and if you're eligible for the vaccine right now. Um, the other resource I always tell people to, uh, to pay attention to is our website. We keep that updated uh, pretty real time with um, where has the vaccine and also how to schedule the, the vaccine. Uh, I know we get a lot of questions uh, uh, regarding a mass vaccine site. Um, and so I think when, when people think of a mass vaccine site, they think of uh, what we have set up at the fairgrounds where there's tents and everything. But in reality, a mass vaccine site is 
a location where uh, we can do a lot of vaccine uh, at one time uh, in a very managed and orderly fashion. Uh, and we built those with our healthcare partners uh, throughout the Valley, our three federally qualified medical uh, uh, centers and our three hospitals have stepped up. They continue not only scheduling uh, during regular clinical hours, but they're also vaccine provided, trying to find ways to uh, do offsite clinics at like a, a middle school or a location like that to really ensure that uh, anyone who has transport access needs uh, can still reach the vaccine uh, and have options there. But obviously, uh, you know, the amount of vaccine we uh, are, are getting is way less than the, the need that we're seeing in our county uh, for people eligible and in, in wanting that vaccine. Uh, so it's going to take time. Uh, and I continue to say that and I continue to urge patients and I know it's uh, frustrating as we look at other counties uh, who maybe are vaccinating quicker. Um, and I think it's important to note, it, note that our vaccine, as soon as it gets into the county, it's, it's not sitting on a shelf anywhere. It is getting pushed out very rapidly uh, by our community partners uh, in the healthcare field. And I think it's also important to uh, give them uh, some props. Uh, they've been fighting COVID uh, in the healthcare field for a year now, and they continue to step up and rise to the occasion and, and build options for the community to, to be able to uh, get vaccinated and stay safe uh, from COVID. So when, when someone calls somewhere and, and they can't get an appointment uh, or their appointments get canceled. It's, it's not a, a, a lack of trying or effort. Uh, it's our hands are so binded with how much vaccine we're getting into the county. Ideally, uh, with a county this size, uh, with the systems that we've built in place, um, between all three of our uh, federally qualified medical centers and our, all three hospitals, as well as our uh, drive-through site that we've built at the State Fair Park, we would need anywhere between 15 and 20,000 doses of vaccine into the county each week. Uh, and I'll remind everyone that we got 500 first doses this week. Um, so um, what we are hopeful though, um, there's um, more companies that are working on uh, finishing their processes to be approved, um, which is encouraging. Uh, the more different uh, supply outlets out there uh, giving a vaccine to that demand it will be beneficial for us. Um, and we're also hopeful um, because uh, we're seeing other uh, programs on the federal level uh, be developed to help get vaccine into the state that don't count against the state's allocation. So each week a state, this Washington state gets allocated a certain amount of vaccine. And then they have to then uh, disperse it out between all the counties uh, and all the facilities throughout the state that are requesting vaccine. So we're seeing other programs very similar to the Walgreens and CVS federal program that uh, Walgreens uh, uh, pharmacies, they receive the vaccine directly from the federal government and it is only for uh, long-term care facilities. So they've been working with a lot of our long-term care facilities uh, vaccinating residents and staff. And we're seeing other uh, sort of initiatives uh, start to happen. Um, one is with another uh, larger pharmacy chain to see more uh, safe ways. And uh, those, those kind of areas also be receiving the vaccine where it doesn't, again, uh, it's encouraging because it's not chipping into what the state's allocation is. So uh, we'll still have vaccine to be able to support our systems that we've built locally with our partners. Um, and then there will be additional options. Um, and again, uh, always encourage people looking at our website for more up-to-date places on where, where and how to get the vaccine. And I think with that, uh, I, will, I will pause if there's any questions. Okay, thank you, Nathan. All righty, so give me one moment while I look at our Facebook comments to see if there are any questions from the audience. Okay, so I believe we have a question towards Sean. Kylian asks, what about support groups held in a business? 
Let me. Here we go. Um, yeah, I'm just pulling that up right now. Uh, it's a good question. Uh, I know. Um, and similar challenges. Oh, Requirements whoa. to reduce risk of COVID-19 infection when convening recovery support groups. The group facilitator slash lead should. That was weird. Uh, I think I hit auto read on the, on the document. Sorry about that, everybody. Um, so the, the current guidance for recovery support groups, um, even in a business setting or, or uh, a church setting or anything like that, it specifically says that um, still that they should be done virtually whenever possible. However, uh, including the uh, uh, lead or facilitator of that meeting, um, you can hold a re support recovery group of no more than 10 at this point. Now I am looking uh, into this to see if there will be any further updates uh, regarding phase two. Um, I haven't found anything yet, uh, but um, you can be certain that the most up-to-date guidance will be posted to our website and the YV Open and Safe website as soon as we, um, you know, I, I find out if there is um, more lenient numbers uh, that can be allowed for such a gathering. Um, so stay tuned on that one. The guidance currently on the governor's website still says um, no more than 10 at a time um, inside a business or whatever venue it might be utilizing. Okay, thank you, Sean. So looks like there's no other questions from the community or people watching us, but I do have a couple questions I can ask. Um, Nathan, I know you probably touched on this a little, um, why did the Yakima County receive a majority of second doses this week of COVID-19? Yeah, so each, each week, uh, again, the state receives this large allocation of, of vaccine, both Moderna and Pfizer, and then they have to figure out how that uh, trickles down to not only the county level, but also an individual facility level. Um, and they use a whole host of different things to be able to make those decisions on, on who gets what and how much. Um, that includes uh, a, a lot of input from uh, what organizations in general are ordering. Um, booster doses are uh, set up to where um, they are, are you know, staggered. So um, essentially, a brand new facility who's never gotten vaccine before, they won't order 500 first doses in that same week also get 500 booster doses. Uh, they would get those 500 initial doses and then a couple weeks later receive those 500 uh, boosters. And so we're seeing a lot of our organizations are getting to the point where uh, it's time for the boosters. And so they're ordering boosters to, to be able to make happen. Um, and in the state, uh, works hard to ensure that there are boosters uh, available for that. Um, so really, you know, I, I can't speak to exactly what the decision making on the state level is on why uh, we got 500 in initial doses and, and 3,200 boosters, but I will say that uh, we are to the point where um, a few weeks ago was when a lot of our facilities got a lot of that, or a lot, uh, you know, anywhere between two, uh, I think as a county, we were receiving just over 2,000 doses of initial vaccine. Um, and so now it's now it's just time for that booster. So they're ordering that. Okay, thank you, Nathan. And then um, Sean, I do have a question for you. Uh, does being in phase two mean open air dining isn't happening anymore? It's a good question. Um, essentially, it means you don't have to use the open air dining criteria. Um, but something to consider is looking at, um, you know, how this, uh, healthy Washington roadmap to recovery works with the ability to move forward and backwards, depending on how our numbers are going. I would encourage, uh, facilities to leave their outdoor dining areas or qualified open air dining, um, areas or setups to utilize an indoor space as open air dining. I would uh, encourage them to leave those options available. Uh, not that I expect us to move to phase one, but there, always, there is the possibility if things start trending uh, the other direction and we do have to move to phase one, um, it, it would be a lot easier transition to move backwards 
if our restaurants were able to one day be allowed to do indoor dining uh, and then the next day have to transition back to outdoor or open air dining. So it's not required that they use any open air dining. Um, they can, uh, for example, if we have a restaurant that has indoor dining at 25% and they have a three wall tent uh, set up outside the restaurant and they got heaters and stuff in it, um, and they still want to utilize that as an option to generate more business, that is allowed. Um, and so, yes, they still can use it. No, they're not required to. Okay, thank you, Sean. And um, if businesses do have questions on these two guidelines, where would be a good resource for them to reference? I'm sorry, uh, you cut out a little bit. Uh, what was the question? Oh. Sorry, um, if businesses do have questions on phase two guidelines, where would be a good resource for them to reference? Oh yeah, uh, so the uh, um, food establishment guidance or um, the eating and drinking establishment guidance on the governor's website, or um, it's on our website actually, yakimahealthdistrict.org. It's also located on uh, the YV Open and Safe website that Yakima Valley Tourism has. Uh, again, you can um, also call 575-4040 uh, and the staff uh, operating the phones will be able to help you, uh, as well as our, um, our environmental health help desk uh, line uh, to talk to environmental health staff who, uh, you know, do uh, food safety regulations. So they're very in tune with these guidances as well. That number is 249-6508. Um, any of those resources or phone, those websites or phone numbers will have the information you need to, um, to answer your questions. Uh, so um, if, if you can't find what you need on the website, please reach out to us. We're happy to uh, have a discussion with you and provide you with uh, any information you might need. Okay. Alrighty, and then Nathan, I do have another question for you. Um, if the Costco pharmacy is receiving COVID-19 vaccines, does this mean that only those who have Costco memberships can get the vaccine? Great question. Um, so we're working on coordinating with Costco and uh, that will definitely be clarified uh, as organizations, whether it's a, a Costco where it's a membership only or a Walgreens, uh, who, who qualifies to be able to get the vaccine there and, and how does someone go about getting the vaccine there? Uh, we work very hard with all of our partners to ensure that vaccine is uh, equitable and low barrier and accessible. Um, so um, that's kind of our, our goal, but more information to come and uh, again, always be looking at our website for uh, updated information on what that looks like for each specific organization. Okay, thank you, Nathan, and thank you, Sean. Let me go ahead and look at our Facebook to see if we have any other questions from the community. Okay, so it looks like we do have a question from Addie. Addie asks, if we were given local control to open as we or the Yakima Health District sees fit, what would that look like? Well, it's tough to speculate on that. Um, I would say um, as a health district, we would, we would follow in line with the, the state DOH's guidelines. Um, as you know, they're, they've been a partner uh, with us through a lot of, a lot of the COVID-19 pandemic and its response. Um, a lot of our resources have, have come uh, thanks to the State Department of Health. So um, working with them on, and their guidelines and moving forward safely, um, uh, I would see is ideal. Um, but local control can mean a lot of things. Is it up to the health district? Is it up to commissioners? We, we wouldn't know until we got there or uh, that was worked out amongst the state and you know each individual region or county. Uh, so it's hard to speculate on that, but um, as, as of right now, you know, we would we would be following the state DOH's guidelines through COVID response um, as they're the ones, you know, that are uh, analyzing the data and putting the guidelines together. 
uh, as to what is considered safe and what is not. Um, you know, gaining local control over that decision and then opening opening everything wide open at this point, um, you know, may lead to a, a very high rate of transmission and uh, set us back even further. So um, we're being really successful right now. Um, so that's uh, where we'll, 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 we'll keep moving forward with. Okay, thank you, Sean. And then let me just look at last minute comments. Um, looks like Tamales Express and more 5050 says, thank you all for the information Yakima Health District. Um, so it's nice to have businesses view us as well. And that looks like it'll conclude our update for tonight. Um, please join us next for our next update, which will be on March 2nd. Next Tuesday on February 23rd, we will be having our COVID-19 weekly update in Spanish. Gracias por acompañarnos hoy. El próximo martes 23 de febrero a las 6 p.m. tendremos nuestra actualización semanal de COVID-19 en español. Esperemos verlos ahí. Thank you again, Sean and Nathan, for your time. And we will see you all again on March 2nd at 6 p.m. on our Facebook Live page. Thank you. Thank you.